Uh, next caller, you're on the air. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Yes, go on. Um, I have one question on Itikaf and a, a couple of questions on Hajj, if you don't mind. Uh, yes. Uh, the first question on Itikaf is, as a mother of three young children, am I able to perform Itikaf during the month of Ramadan in my own home? And what are the conditions and what do I actually need to okay. do during the Itikaf? And uh, a couple of questions on Hajj. The first question is, what's the wisdom behind not wearing niqab during Ihram? Um, and the second question on Hajj is, uh, if I'm on my menses during uh, during the days of Hajj and I'm unable to perform the Tawafi Wada, I think it's called, or Ifada, um, and I'm flying back out to London, for example, what should I do if I'm on my menses and I can't perform that Tawaf? And the third question is, does being on my menses during the days of Hajj devalue the Hajj at all in any way? And apart from obviously doing tasbih and stuff, what else can I do if I'm on my menses during the days of Hajj? Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as wa Okay. The first question is about uh, irtikaf uh, in one's home. Uh, this is a difference of fiqh. One of the four madhabs allows irtikaf in one's home, and the other three madhab uh, say that irtikaf have to be, has to be done in a masjid. And uh, to be honest, it does seem that the majority are correct in this regard. And this is the position that I follow, that i'tikaf, really the concept of i'tikaf is only in the masjid. And of the simplest of evidences, the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, when they did i'tikaf, they would do it in the masjid, even though their houses were connected to the masjid. Can you believe this, right? The houses are literally connected to the masjid. Aisha's house, other, uh, Umm Salama's house, they were connected to the masjid. But when they did i'tikaf, they actually went into the masjid and they built small little uh, curtains for themselves. They, they hung them, excuse me, I should say not built. They hung little curtains in the corner and they would then do i'tikaf inside the masjid. And therefore, it is pretty clear, therefore, that i'tikaf is only done in the masjid. If you are the mother of three and you need to take care of them and you have responsibilities, then the responsibility of taking care of your children is more important because this is fard than the sunnah of doing i'tikaf. So wait until your children are older when they can fend for themselves and inshallah ta'ala you will find then a masjid to do i'tikaf in. Uh, the second question our sister had is the woman, uh, is the wisdom of not wearing niqab during hajj. Realize sister that anytime we get to an issue of what is the wisdom, then everybody will have an opinion and only Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. Uh, however, the Prophet ﷺ forbade the woman from wearing gloves and the niqab and perhaps the reason being that the niqab and the gloves were of the ways that women would show their status in the days of uh, jahiliyyah. Just like the men as well, they would wear uh, certain types of garments and the Prophet ﷺ said everybody must wear simple ihram garments. And so uh, those women who are accustomed to wearing niqab, those who wear niqab uh, and they consider it to be wajib or even they consider it to be sunnah and they're wearing it, when they go for hajj, what they do is they don't put on a separate face veil that they wear over here. They should use their headscarf and leave the last bit of it dangling and they can then dangle it beneath their faces in this manner and, they, and this will cover the face without wearing the niqab. And this is what Aisha would do, that she would use her headscarf, her khimar, what we call in our times the hijab. She would use her hijab and lower it above her face for those who wear niqab outside of hajj. For those who don't wear niqab outside of hajj, then of course this issue does not uh, arise. Uh, the issue of menses during hajj. Uh, my dear sister in Islam, uh, Aisha herself faced menses. Aisha herself, uh, she had her menses during hajj. And when they did the only hajj that she did with the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ, uh, came in one day to his tent and he saw Aisha crying in the corner. And he said, Malaki la'allaki nafisti. Why are you crying? Have you started your menses? He immediately understood, perhaps because he knew when are the menses going to start, as every husband knows. So he was crying and so he assumed that the menses had started. So he said, yes, my menses have started. So she was feeling sad that her menses had started. Do you know what the Prophet ﷺ said? He said, this is something that Allah has decreed for all women. Nothing to cry about. You're not the only one. This is something that Allah has decreed for all of the daughters of Adam. So do everything that the hujjaj do, except don't do the tawaf. Therefore, she may do dua, she may do dhikr, she may read books of knowledge, she may increase. So the hajj is not devalued at all because you will get the reward of what you would have done outside of menses because Allah Azza wa Jal decreed the menses and not you. Uh, however, the tawaf uh, cannot be done. Now, uh, dear sister, 
you need you need to understand that there are different types of tawafs of hajj. If you haven't done hajj, then uh, there are at least three types of tawaf. There's tawaf al-qudum, tawaf al-ifada, and tawaf al-wada. Tawaf al-qudum is when you first come to Mecca and you do a tawaf. That's uh, depending again on what type of hajj you do. Uh, let's just suppose you are doing uh, the type that is ifrad or qiran, uh, that type of sunnah. You don't have to do tawaf al-qudum and if, if you're doing uh, that, uh, the tawaf al uh, if you're doing the, the hajj that is the ifrad type of hajj. Tawaf al-qudum is sunnah if you're doing that type of hajj. Uh, tawaf al-ifada is the primary tawaf and that must be done after the uh, day of Arafah. It must be done on the 10th onwards. This tawaf is the pillar of hajj. Tawaf al-wada' is wajib. So tawaf al-sunnah is uh, tawaf al-qudum is sunnah, tawaf al-ifada is wajib, uh, rukun, sorry, rukun, and tawaf al-wada' is wajib. If you have your menses during tawaf al-qudum, don't worry about it. You can make it up after the 10th of the hijjah If you had your menses after doing tawaf al-ifada, but before doing tawaf al-wada', so suppose your menses started on the 12th of the hijjah and you did your tawaf al-ifada on the 10th or the 11th. In this case, you don't have to worry about tawaf al uh, tawaf al wada and you may ignore it without any penalty. The woman in menses is excused from doing tawaf al wada. She doesn't have to do tawaf al wada if she's done her tawaf al ifada. So the main tawaf is tawaf al ifada, which is the tawaf that is done on the ninth. Uh, sorry, after the ninth, on the tenth or eleventh of the hijjah, you really, really, really should try your best to make sure that that tawaf is done before your menses starts. Uh, or else, honestly, it is a big problematic issue. There are some scholars who have allowed the tawaf al-ifada to be done for those who are forced to leave. They uh, allow the tawaf al-ifada to be done in the state of menses if she takes extra precautions that none of the najis leaks and she does tawaf in that state. This is a minority uh, position. Um, and in light of the current circumstances, really it is a very problematic issue. Uh, it is difficult to get your passport back and delay it. I understand the difficulties. I too have done plenty of hajjahs and I know it's very difficult. My, my, my sincere request to you is go to a doctor, see if you can take those pills to see, you know, uh, and make sure you start early on so that no, no issue happens. Uh, and then inshallah ta'ala, ask Allah Azza wa to make sure that this doesn't bother your uh, tawaf, uh, your hajj. We need to take a short break. We'll be back after the break inshallah ta'ala.